Hey everybody, Patton here. Welcome back to the channel. So the guys over at Tripware have made this really, really awesome Sega front end for the Raspberry Pi called Blast 16. So if you're a fan of the Genesis or Sega altogether and you have a Raspberry Pi, you owe it to yourself to get this front end. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to set everything up to get this on your Raspberry Pi, as well as show you all the options and a little bit of gameplay within the front end. As for the hardware needed for this, Tripware recommends using a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus. Let's look at some of the key features they have on their website. You can play Mega Drive or Genesis games. It gives you a list of file types here that are supported. Sega CD, 32X, Master System, and Game Gear games. There is support for zipped files and 7-zip files. This is running off RetroArch with the Genesis Plus GX and Pico Drive core. You need both of those cores because some games will only run on Pico Drive and the others will run on Genesis Plus GX. You can fast boot into it. You can do everything from the front end with a controller such as deleting games from the system, which is really nice not having to go into RetroArch to get that done. You can do that straight from the front end. You're able to create your own favorite games list. It does have support for Bluetooth controllers. That's why they recommend the 3B Plus because of the Bluetooth adapter. It works best with that hardware. It also has multi-tap support and it has four slots for save states. Some other features of Blast 16. The background music was written by Loop and Pixel and it's got a really nice menu music. It's really nice, you're gonna like it. It is compatible with the Mega Pi case reset and shutdown scripts. Easily copy all your games from USB drive on boot it is easy to update, displays box arts. If the game's box art isn't found, a generic one will be displayed instead. And some other features we'll go into once we boot this up. In the download section, you have the card image, which you will need. Also the user manual. I recommend you download this. This is very handy. We'll go over a little bit of what's in the user manual. You can also get the box art straight from their website, either Genesis, Mega Drive, Master System, Game Gear, Sega CD, and a 32X. They have that ready for you right here on the website. So the user manual, like I said, very, very helpful. It explains everything about this front end that you need to know. Like I mentioned before, the recommended hardware, Raspberry Pi 3B Plus. Also the 8-bit Doe M30 Bluetooth controller and the Megapi case. The controllers I used are the 8-bit Doe Famicom 30 Pro controller, which worked really well, and my PlayStation 3 controller. We'll go over that later. They explain the install process, the update process, explanation of the menus, how to use favorite games, everything that I'm gonna go over in this video. This section right here was very useful, the hotkeys. Hitting hotkey and start will take you to the RetroArch menu or start and select. Pushing left and right will change the save slot. Up and down will increase or decrease the volume. Hitting the A button will save, B will load, C will return you back to the Blast 16 menu, X will reset the entire console, and Y will toggle fast forward. Very useful, and there's not that many combinations here, so it's easy to remember. Now I mentioned I used my PS3 controller and it didn't completely work, but that's okay because they don't have it under support right here. So I'll go over just a couple little issues I was having with my PlayStation 3 controller. It's not a big deal, doesn't break anything. Then it explains how you copy your games, box art, and BIOS files. This does not have BIOS files for the Sega CD games. You will have to provide those for yourself. If you need help or troubleshooting, you can email them right here at blast16 at tripware.es or get them on Twitter. So let's get started on how to put this on your Raspberry Pi B3 Plus. You'll need a program called Etcher to flash the image to a micro SD card. And then you'll need a separate USB flash drive to add your games and box art. So what we have here on my desktop is the image. It's about three and a half gigabytes. Next we have our game art. And I got this directly from their website. You can see they are in PNG format. Upon first boot into Blast 16, it will change all these into JPEG format. So if you want, you can change these to JPEG beforehand to skip that step. And then finally, we have our games here. You'll see that most of them are in zip format and I have some in MD format. What I'm planning on doing is adding 40 of the 42 games that are included on the Genesis Mini to Blast 16. And we have all those in MD format. Like was mentioned before, you can keep these zipped if you'd like. I only unzip them to keep them separate from the other files. So like I mentioned before, to flash this, you will need a program called Etcher. I'll have the website in my description for you to download it. All you have to do is hit the download button right here. It'll automatically detect what system you're running. So within Etcher, it's very simple. All you do is hit the select image button. You go to wherever your image is, hit open. It's gonna automatically select which flash drive. If you need to change it, just hit change down here, just in case you have more than one 
plugged into your PC at the same time. Then you just hit this flash button. So it'll flash the image to the card, then it will verify it. And then it'll let you know when it's been done successfully. I didn't see anywhere what preference they had in formatting your micro SD card. So mine is formatted to FAT32. On the root over your USB drive, right click and go to new. We're gonna create a new folder. That folder is gonna be named games, just like this. Go into your games folder. You're gonna create another one. We're only dealing with Genesis or Mega Drive games. So this folder is gonna be called MD. It explains in the user manual what to name the other folders for other systems you wanna use, such as GG for Game Gear or CD for Sega CD. So going into the MD folder, this is where we're going to put all of our games. So there you go, 40 items. These are 40 main games for the Sega Genesis Mini. So in the MD folder, we're gonna right click again, we're going to make another folder. We're going to name this one box arts. Inside the box arts folder, this is where we put our box art. Now I've already separated out all 40 images of box art for the 40 games I have here. The entire collection has something like 1500 or 1600 pieces of box art. So the more you have on your flash drive, when you first boot this up, the longer it's going to take to scan everything and then change it into JPEG format. So I've already gone ahead and taken the 40 that I need for this demonstration. So real quick, even though I'm emphasizing on adding Genesis games to Blast 16, I did want to show you guys how to add your BIOS files in case you were interested in running Sega CD games. It's actually really easy. So here you can see we're on the root of our USB drive. We're going to right click, go to new folder, name this folder BIOS, go into that BIOS folder. And this is where you're going to keep your Sega CD BIOS files. All you have to do is drag them into this folder or you can right click copy and then paste them in here. You have three BIOS files with three different regions for Europe, Japan, and US. They have to be named exactly like this BIOS, all in lowercase, underscore, capital C, D, underscore, capital E, or J, or U, depending on which BIOS you're using. There's no reason you can't copy all three in here. They're very small in size. Just wanted to touch on this real quick in case you guys were interested in doing Sega CD with Blast 16. And at this point, we're all set. We just have to put the micro SD card into our Raspberry Pi 3B Plus and insert the flash drive to the back of the Raspberry Pi. So I'm gonna connect those now as well as a controller and we're gonna boot up Blast 16 for the first time. All right, you can see here that the script is running. It's searching all the box art that's on the USB drive right now. It's changing it from PNG to JPEG format. Um, and you can see there was a little note there that they said that the USB was mounted so we can remove it. So we'll do that in a moment. All right, so this is Blast 16 and you can hear that menu music from Lupin Pixel. Let's take a listen. It sounds awesome. And this whole thing is awesome. Look at the aesthetic here, how the background moves like that. Everything just screams Mega Drive. This is insane. It looks so good. All the games are lined up nice. You have sound effects, you have the background music. Everything about this, I, I, I love it. I love it. all of it. We can see a couple box arts didn't work right. We have Sonic Spinball, more than likely because of how the games are spelled. There may be another one, Toe, Jam, and Earl. So we'll fix that. I'll show you guys how to fix that if that happens. So left and right will cycle you through your games, hitting the L and R button. We'll do a bigger cycle. In the top corner, you have that icon with a star showing if you hit up, it goes to your favorite games. And then the other icon for the Genesis, if you hit up or down again, takes you back to your regular games list. At the bottom, you can see the three controls for playing the game, loading the game, and choosing your favorites. Hitting C on any of the games marks it as a favorite. I think that's awesome. I love that you can do it right here from the front end. There's nothing special. You're just marking the game. So let's mark a couple games as our favorite. I think Vector Man is definitely one of my favorites. Uh, Altered Beast. Beyond Oasis, yeah, Castlevania, definitely, of course. Uh, Comic Zone, Contra, Ghouls and Ghosts, all right. So now if we hit up, you'll see that the games that we marked as favorite are now in their own little section here. And again, if we're in this section, you hit C, they're removed. So we can go back down. We can either remove them from this list or from our favorites list. So let's look at some of the options. We're gonna hit Start to get into the Options menu. We have Settings, Input, Tools, Help, credits, reboot, and shut down. If we go into the help option, uh, there's a QR code you can scan uh, to send an email to Tripware for any troubleshooting issues that you may be having. So let's start with settings. What do we have? We have general settings. We can change the language, the logo, or turn the music on and off. 
I don't know why you would want to do that since the music is so good. So languages, what do we have? English, uh, Spanish, French. I know it's not Dutch. I said that in another video and people were like, it's not Dutch. I don't know what language it is, but it's there. Uh, Italian? I don't know if that's Japanese or Chinese. I'm gonna say Japanese. I don't know, sorry. Uh, Netherlands? I don't know what language that is either. Uh, Portuguese and Portuguese. So wait, is this Portuguese Brazilian and another Portuguese? I honestly didn't know there were different ones. So we're gonna stay with English. A logo, I love this option. You can choose between the European logo, Japanese logo, USA, and Brazil. So we're gonna pick USA for the Genesis. We're gonna go back. Uh, emulation settings, what do we have? Auto load, yes. That means whenever you quit a game and go back to the menu, when you start it up again, you'll begin in the same point where you left off. And this is separate from the save states. You can choose between two cores, Genesis Plus GX and Pico Drive. I believe the difference in cores is that one will allow you to play 32X games and the other allows Game Gear games. I may be incorrect, I might have to look up some documentation, but I'm pretty sure that's the difference here. Integer scale, this kind of changes how the game looks, it just changes the game display a little bit, it makes it a little bit bigger. Then we have a bunch of display options. You can choose to play your game with no option, bilinear filter, scan lines, and then we have some TV filters here. Monochrome, composite, S-video, and RGB. Then you have a few frame selections, blast 16 blue. Blast 16 Purple, Grid, and Super Retro Pie Grid. Going into the input options, first we have the input mapping, which allows you to remap your buttons on your controller. Multiplayer config, going into this, you can choose if you're using a multi-tap on either of these ports. You have the three button four-way play, or the six button four-way play, three button team player, and six button team player. You can assign either of those to port 1 or port 2. You can connect the gamepad or reset the Bluetooth cache. Under Tools, we have the Delete Games option. If we select that, we can go through games we may not like, like Alex Kidd. We'll select that one. Just hit the C button, World of Illusion, any game here. And I like that you can select more than one game. Or you can hit the C button on a game you selected to deselect it. You can back up your system, restore your system, resize the box art, open RetroArch itself, or go to the Raspberry Pi command line. So like I mentioned before, I'm using two different controllers with this, my 8-bit though controller, which worked perfect, no issues at all. But right now I'm using my PlayStation 3 controller. And again, they never said they had compatibility with the PlayStation 3 controller, but the one issue with using PS3, for one, I can't connect to Bluetooth with it. I have to keep this wired. For some reason, it wouldn't connect through Bluetooth and that's okay. The second is I can't control this main menu with the D-pad. I have to use the analog stick, which isn't a huge deal. We can still get through the menu, but sometimes if you're going through, you'll hit the up button on accident just because of how analog sticks work. A very, very minor thing. So we're gonna go into a game real quick and see how they play Streets of Rage 2. I don't play this game enough. I really love the series, but I haven't given it enough attention. So I selected the bilinear filtering and the RetroPie frame here, I think is a good combination. I love bilinear filtering, a lot of people don't. Also, even though the D-pad does not work on the main menu, it does work in game. You can use the D-pad with the PS3 controller in game. We are Axel, let's mess up some guys. Here we go. Already we're doing great. Everything sounds really good. It looks perfect. It feels like it's playing just fine. I remember all those Genesis sounds. We're doing great. So a couple of things you could do in game here. If you hit start and select, that will take you to the RetroArch menu. Now you can see here the options have been stripped way down to just the quick menu and the settings menu, which is fine. You're going to be doing most of your work on the front end anyway. But you can adjust the options here if you wish. If you know what you're doing, by all means. If not, I would stay away from it. So holding the hotkey and hitting A gives us a quick save. You can't really see it in the corner there, but it said save to slot zero. And then holding the hotkey and hitting C will return us to the menu. So back at the main menu, hitting the B button will bring up our save states. And you see we have one here. You can select up to four. One very small glitch I found is if you back out of the save state and then try and enter it right away, the picture goes away. But again, that's cosmetic. It doesn't actually do anything. If you just wait a little bit longer to go back into that menu, the window is there. You have to actually be going 
very fast to make that window disappear. So a very, very minor gripe. Another thing I do want to mention is that you can only fit up to 600 games on here before you will crash the system. That's from the developers itself. That may be changed in the future, we don't know, but right now you can only have up to 600 games. So one last thing, we had some issues with the box art not showing up. So I'll show you guys how to take care of that really quick. It's very simple. All right, so anytime you guys have box art that doesn't work, it's usually because it has to be named exactly the same as your game name. So here we are on our USB drive. We're gonna go into our box arts folder. Now the two games that weren't working were Sonic Spinball and Toe Jam and Earl. So let's look at these real quick. Sonic Spinball USA. ToeJam underscore Earl World. If we go back into our games folder, you can see that our Sonic Spinball is named Sonic the Hedgehog Spinball, and we have ToeJam and Earl, no underscore, anything like that. So this is a super easy fix. You're just gonna click on your game name, right click and copy. Go back to your box arts folder, find the box art, and then just paste it right here to make sure it is spelled exactly like the game. We're gonna do the same thing with Toe Jam and Earl and paste and that's it. So now they should be looking just fine. Tripware did an awesome job on this. And to be honest, I think I enjoy these more specific front ends than something like Emulation Station. There's nothing wrong with Emulation Station or anything like that, but I like when you have it singled out to a specific system I don't know, it feels more appealing to me. This is something I would probably keep on my Raspberry Pi full time. So for those of you who aren't into the mini scene, you know, you're, you don't really care that the Genesis Mini, you don't have the nostalgia for those systems. If you're still a Genesis fan and you have a Raspberry Pi, this is exactly what you're looking for, Blast 16. So I do want to thank Tripware for what they've done here. Please donate to these guys. They do this on their spare time. Nobody's paying for them. They're not charging for this. Please toss some money at them. They really deserve it. This is wonderful. I love this. Before I go, I want to mention two other channels that are actually covering this. Magnus and Rostalgia. They do a lot of work with the PlayStation Classic. Rostalgia's channel involves more product reviews and tutorials. And Magnus's channel shows you demonstrations of different things you can do with your system. So I'll make sure I put a link to their channels in my description so you can check them out. So that's all I got for you guys. Let me know what you think in the comments of Blast 16. Is it something you would put on your Raspberry Pi? They don't have anything for the Odroid right now. I really hope they can, you know, convert this to the Odroid because I think this would be great and I love playing stuff on my Odroid. So thank you all so much for watching and I will see you next time.